Hello and welcome to the last unit of this module of control unit and here in this unit we will be discussing about different internal CPU bus organization. So, throughout this module on control unit we have seen how we can generate different type of control signals and then we have seen that how different instructions involve what type of control signals and then we have discussed how these control signals can be generated using a hardware control and then we have seen how we can do it using a microprogram control unit. But for everywhere we basically assume that the uh, CPU is a single single bus organization architecture that is there is a single bus uh, which carries the data and control signals there will be a single pair of buses. But now before we end this module let us try to give you a very short idea that if there are multiple buses then what can be the advantages and what can be the disadvantages. Of course, one clear advantage as you can figure out if you have multiple buses to carry out data and control you require much less control steps because many operations can be done in parallel. So, these are very simple which is the logical argument that if you have multiple paths then obviously you can reach the destination much faster because you can do things parallelly. But again also we will see some stray cases where not much advantage is there, but also at the same time you have to appreciate that it involves more cost. So, if you have very high number of system buses not only the cost of the cheap design or cheap cost will increase, but also at the same time controlling it uh, will involve more number of circuit and overhead will increase. But we are not going to give, go to a very in depth design discussion on different type of CPU buses then how you can design control units for that. Rather we will try to give you an idea that what are the different type of control signals required if you have multiple bus architecture and how, what is the advantage and how things can move faster. Based on this idea you can very easily uh, uh, recast if you have multiple bus architecture then how can you recast and generate control signals for different uh, instructions as well as also you will be able to generate circuits for control units and internal and the micro program architecture. Because we already know those concepts and here we will show you what are the changes if you have multiple bus architecture and then you yourself can think and make a merge and blend of it if somehow you have to, if at some point of time you have to design a micro program control unit for 3 bus architecture or 4 bus architecture. So, let us in the unit have a very brief and broad overview that how things change if they have different internal bus organization compared to a single bus architecture. So, in this discussion mainly we will not be considering a two bus architecture, we will rather go for a three bus architecture which will give you a more elaborate feel that if you have multiple IOs possible together what is the advantages. So, as you see that is the last part of this uh, unit that is how all this basically all these units basically covered the uh, uh, the uh, means whatever we covered in all these mod in units basically was on single bus architecture. Finally, in the last we will just give you an overview of three bus architecture. So, that you can uh, intuitively think that how other uh, concepts will change if you have a multiple bus architecture. So, again as from pedagogical sense let us try to see uh, what is going to be so we will try to summarize uh, in this unit what we are going to expect. So, in case of multiple bus systems there are multiple buses that connects the different different components of the CPU that is obvious. So, uh, there will be not a single data and address bus there can be multiple buses to transfer the signals ok. Obviously, less number of control signals and temporary registers will be required if there are multiple buses well, as we will see that is quite obvious also because if you have two lines to send the input and two lines to get the outputs you may not require any temporary register because there will be two direct lines which will feed the ALU. If you consider a single bus architecture if you remember then if you want to add two numbers a plus b, but there is only one path to give the values then you have to intermediate store the value of a at some temporary register. The second operand that is b can be directly fed to the ALU through the bus and then you have to add and this answer will also be have to be stored temporarily in a register because the bus at present is carrying the value b. Once the addition is done then you can make b free and then you can feed the answer of the a plus b to the to the bus, but if you have three buses then two bus will feed a plus b and the third bus will just give the value will take the value of the output that is a plus b. So, in one go you can do a plus b equal to c it is as simple as there will be one input a one input b that the two buses there will be a ALU and this will be third bus. So, this is a b and c if there are three buses and but if there is a single bus then first one bus will dump the value of a and stored in a register then the uh, same same bus will now divert to b and it will hold the v value temporarily then you will do a plus b equal to c and then if in the third part third state you have to erase the value of b from that bus and dump the value of c to that bus so that it can be saved into the memory location so three steps are required but if you have more buses very easily you can in a single stage you can do multiple operations which will be parallel and faster 
So that is what is going to be the basic summary of this uh, of this uh, unit. But now let us look at different components like program counter, memory address registers, etc., and how they will change if there are multiple buses. So what is the program counter? So program counter actually points to the current instruction, and then it will do program counter plus the next address. So, that it can program counters plus increment which will point to the next address of the instruction. So, in fact, that is very simple. So, you always do PC equal to PC plus constant. So, in a single bus, if you remember, you require two stage. First, the program counter will be dumped to the will be in the bus, and in the second stage, you have to do program counter plus program counter plus constant by the ALU, and that has to be stored in a temporary register. And then only in the second stage, the temporary register value will be dumped to the bus, which will again go and save it to the uh, program counter because there is a single bus which does that and first program counter is feeding this value here which you are storing in a temporary register and this may be your constant and then you are going to add it by the ALU. So, this is equal to PC plus 1 then again it has to go and write back to the program counter, but there is a single bus. So, in stage 1 the program counter value will go as an operand to the ALU addition will be done and stored in a temporary register which is this one is a temporary register and then in the next stage you will dump the value of PC plus 1 or the PC plus constant into this bus it will again write back to the PC already we have seen the concept. So, two stages are required, but in a three or multiple bus system mainly we are keeping our discussion here in a three bus system and we are assuming that there are two buses will take the output and one bus will give the input to the registers we will see in details, but of course in two bus system all the uh, registers actually have multiple ports because it is very obvious because if you have only one gateway and therefore multiple paths then there will be no advantage. So, here different registers have different input and output ports somebody has multiple output ports that the register can give output to three parallel buses together and it can obviously read only from one port you cannot read from multiple ports together. So, there will be multiple in you know, multiple output ports which you basically assume. So, in fact, it can be something like this one register can give multiple outputs to two different bus or more number of buses and there will be also one input port which means takes the data in parallel. So, the all these three activities can be done in together. So, one data can come in or the, uh, the previous data can be sent out together and so forth. Of course, you cannot have two inputs that does not have any meaning basically. So, the program counter has two ports. So, what happens we will we'll see later uh, in, in details. So, we will see that how program counter can be made more efficient using two ports because in one case uh, the program counter will give the value out as this one as PC which will be pointing to the current uh, instruction and the same time it will also go as the operand to the ALU you will have ALU uh, a in the ALU will do PC equal to PC plus 1 and you need, need not wait that you have to erase this value and then only you can dump the value of PC equal to PC plus 1 because there are two buses here in fact multiple three buses. So, you can directly feed the value of PC equal to PC plus 1 and the same unit of time. So, that therefore, there will be two ports and we can actually uh, do this in single stage we will see let in, in with a figure later. So, but first with the summary is that we will study how program counter efficiency can be increased using two port memory address register. So, this is very interesting. So, here the memory register register in case of multiple bus as well as single bus will be similar. Now, why? Because you have a single memory and memory address register what it does is basically it tells that from which location of the memory data has to be brought in. So, even if I have multiple ports or even if you have your memory address register can write to multiple outputs and similarly take data and can write simultaneously to the output this of course, we can do we can uh, give the value in one go and other values it can give out, but you see this one will have no sense here because if there is multiple memory then only this is going to be a very advanced then it will be a very advantageous concept because you can read from one from one main memory location here of course, the same memory location value you can also read from another memory. So, of course, the memory location will be same, but you can fetch two different data from two different memory blocks and you can give to two different registers. Of course, the memory location if it is 3 over here it is 3 over here also in this memory block, but the, as there are two different independent memories data can be different. So, you can make a program like that. So, that you can fetch from two different memory locations or sorry from two different memory blocks you can fetch data together and you, you can use it parallelly. But in this context we are not handling processors which are having multiple memory blocks as well. So, we are restricting to three bus architecture, but there is a single memory. So, under that case you can you need not modify your memory address register because the output of the memory re address register goes to the memory. So, if you have a single memory of course, multiple output like this from the memory address register will not help. So, uh, you will also appreciate this fact in this uh, unit that why memory address register 
has no extra advantage of having more output lines if you have a single memory because but if you have multiple memories then you of course you can feed it together and get the advantage then the memory data register of course where some very intuitively you can feel that memory data register means it will take some data from the memory and of course you have to distribute to some other places like if you have an instruction called load r1 m so data from the memory will be dumped to register r1 so in this case maybe if i have multiple ports of course it is very advantageous because you can quickly transmit this data from memory uh, load memory r1 maybe there can be on the same instruction load r2 m so in fact if you have multiple ports from which you can do the output so you can very quickly read from the memory and send the value to through two wires because you have multiple buses that is r1 and r2 can be directly fed so that is very true and very obvious that uh, because uh, you read one from the memory and then the data can go to multiple places like different registers instruction registers accumulators so if your memory data register this is coming from the memory of course this will be one but you, you can have if it has multiple outputs so it can feed different lines in one go so in this uh, uh, this is one point which we are going to discuss in this unit that is how memory data register if having multiple ports what will be the advantages advantages so in a three bus architecture mdr has four ports unlike two in the case of a single bus organization single bus means there will be one input from the memory and uh, the other will be to the uh, reg, uh, other, and the other will be towards the different places where it wants to send the data and of course in this is the context of when the memory is writing to the registers in fact also for reading what happens then actually thing reverses but in a nutshell i am not going to go into that type of integrations in this unit but in two uh, single bus architecture from the memory to the registers and vice versa but in case of multiple ports multiple uh, buses we have actually four ports four port memory so four port mdr so obviously in this case uh, it will help because in case of three bus arrangement mdr reads from bus c or memory that is we are assuming there is a three bus architecture so a b and c a b and c so generally the uh, organization will be following is that everybody will dump the values to a and b and will read that is they will, they will be writing to a and b and they will be reading from c, c bus three, bus c so three buses will be there in the organization so all the registers etc will write in bus ab and will read from bus c and of course uh, because it's a memory data register so mdr it will it can also read from the memory so basically in our uh, uh, previous single bus architecture it used to read from the memory and dump to uh, bus a because there was only one bus but in this case actually they are in, in increasing the number and then we'll see how it becomes faster because in memory data register you can read from the memory that is one one extra bus c is there that also can write to the memory data register and of course it is going to give output to bus a and b so it has multiple ports so in this case it is will be faster because you can take some data from the memory or you can take some data uh, from some uh, bus because uh, in this case it actually writes from the some bus to the memory and in this case it goes from the memory to the some registers etc through the wires a and b so multiple port means you read a data from the memory and write to two locations connected to register to buses a and b simultaneously and it will be a faster operation so due to due to multiple port writes data from mdr can go to more number of blocks in a single cpu cycle that is the buzzword more number of ports you read from the memory you read from another bus called c or, or any other place and then dump directly to the components connected through bus a and b instruction register again this is very very similar to a single bus architecture because even if you have multiple uh, input output ports from a instruction register it will not help you to parallelize because we are handling one instruction at a time but if it is a parallel processing kind of an architecture then multiple instruction can be faced and executed together uh, like for example if you have one instruction called say add r1 r2 another instruction say add r3 r4 and there is no inter interdependence in between so you can execute add r1 r2 and add, add r3 r4 in parallel so in that case if you have multiple instruction registers and multiple input output ports somehow it can help but unless multiple instructions are there we are actually it is not better to have anything in the instruction register it can be it is very similar to that of a single bus architecture so here our assumptions are slightly different it is not actually totally parallelized it is a single bus architecture like 
uh, by topology, but only the number of buses are 3 compared to 1. Memory is also not multiple and in only single instructions are handled at a time. So, so in that context we are going to discuss this unit like arithmetic and logic unit. Of course, similar because we are not handling multiple instructions. So, ALU can do only one operation at a time. So, ALU just like this if you look at it, it is something like this and something like this. You cannot, there is no uh, po uh, means point in uh, putting multiple input output ports uh, because we are actually not going to handle multiple instructions. But one actually changes here, this is something interesting. So, as I told you, if you remember if this is a single bus architecture, then first the data comes here and gets stored in a temporary memory. Second stage, this value gets directly fed over here, the addition or subtraction is done and the output is also stored in a temporary register. And then in the third phase, this one will go over there, this one will be erased, the erased means it is nullified and the value will travel to the bus and go to the register. But if you look at, if there are multiple registers, multiple words, then actually all these things, all these temporary registers can be done away with. So, we can have three, so this one will go over here, this one will go over here and this one will go over here A, B, F. So, that is the only difference in the context of ALU that there is no buffering registers or there is no temporary registers are eliminated. So, that will be the difference. So, in summary, we are going to look at three bus architecture, how control signal changes and how the different components basically, requirement of different components like ALU, program counter, memory data register, memory buffer registers change in this context. That is what we are going to learn in this unit. So, what are the basic objectives of the unit? The basic objective of the unit is one is a comprehensive objective that is you will be able to describe about different internal CPU bus organization and placement of components. That is if I give you a single bus architecture, two bus architecture, three bus architecture, you will be able to design the entire system and place the different components like ALU, registers etcetera. And then analysis is that you can compare the performance of the processor while executing an instruction depending on the internal organization of the processor. That is whether it is a single bus architecture, two bus architecture, three bus architecture. Then if I am executing some instructions, what are the number of steps required, how the control signals will change, what are the advantages etcetera, we will be able to compare. So, that is these are the two basic objectives of this unit. Before we start, this one let us pay very careful attention on this three bus architecture. So, again I will first show you that is a three bus architecture, we have three buses A, B and C and these are the internal components like PC, register, ALU, decoder, instruction register etcetera. But now we will try to assume here that bus A and B if you look at it, bus A and B are going to take the data from the output of the registers and blocks and bus C mainly basically is going to take the data and write it to the registers and for ALU it is just the reverse. Again I am repeating general trend in this architecture, whatever values you have to dump from program counter, any other register will be dumped to bus A and B. So, mainly bus A and B are going to read the values and you are going to write the values, sorry bus A and B are going to take the values from program counter register files etcetera and the registers are going to read from bus C and only for the arithmetic and logic it will be just the reverse, it will read from bus A and B and write to bus C and we will see why it will help. So, with this assumption we will take some time and look at this bus in elaboration. So, there are two buses A, A and B. So, you can just assume that for all the registers they will be writing the values from the registers to bus A and B and they have two ports. So, if you see their register file that means R1, R2, R3, R4 and so forth. So, they have two output ports. So, same value can be dumped at register A and so bus A and bus B. So, same register values or the register outputs will be now available in two bus simultaneously and bus C is generally going to give the out in, uh, input to the registers. Program counter generally is guy writing to bus B, you can also think that I am going to write to bus A, but generally as the program counter give the values only to memory address register to find out the next instruction is not advantageous or not necessary that you dump the values in both A and B, not necessary. But in bus C is going to give the input to program counter or any other register. Now, let us look at the ALU, here is slightly different. So, in, the, in all other cases basically the registers they are going to dump the values to A and B and read from C, but ALU is slightly reverse they will take the values from A and B and the output will dump to C. This is obvious basically it is a mirror image kind because you are going to give one some registers is going to give the values which has to be computed upon. So, a register will write the value to this bus and this bus they are going to take the inputs and the output is going to be dumped to C. 
So, that is very obvious that uh, registers are connected to the inputs of the ALU and the output of the ALU is again going to write, write to the uh, registers or the variables that is A plus B equal to C. So, what are these are the outputs A B and this is the going to be the output which is C. So, uh, just you are remembering as default that register files are writing register bank is writing to bus A and B which are inputs to the ALU or some other uh, blocks and the composition output will go via C and it will go to and write the register blocks. Again this is very similar to the single bus concept marks with a select if it is a constant then program counter will be incremented otherwise it is going to take a operand from bus A. Bus second operand B is directly connected to the ALU. Instruction register is going to take the value from bus C. Again, uh, for instruction register, is slightly the other way around. Uh, it is going to take the uh, data from some instruction register. Uh, from bus B, instruction register is going to take the value. It is going to uh, go to the instruction decoder and it is going to write the values of the instruction decoder value to bus B. So, these are cycle over here. We will let us see how it is advantageous and why the connection is in this manner. Memory data register again it will take the value from bus because memory data register is also a register. So, it will take the value from bus C and it will dump the value together to bus A and B. So, in, in fact, basically what happened all the registers accepting instruction register and ALU are connected in a very similar kind of a fashion that is they dump the values to bus A or B or both and read from bus C. ALU is just the reverse it will take the values from A and B and write to C because it is A plus B equal to C. So, whatever are output for the registers will become input from the ALU and what are the inputs for the register file is the output for the ALU that is obvious just uh, memory data register is also the same thing and the interconnectivity of the instruction register is slightly different. It takes just the value from IR from bus B and it dumps the value uh, basically. Uh, to bus B or C. In fact, I mean uh, this is in fact, uh, I mean if you say this is in fact not very much required because what happens is that it generally generates this multiple signals. So, basically it reads from bus B and generally it generates multiple signals. So, this signal basically whatever in this part is not that very relevant. Then basically if you look at it the last block which is important here is the memory address register. So, uh, sorry, sorry in memory data register there is one more port basically which is the input which is coming from the memory. So, memory data register here has 4 ports it dumps the value to 2 register 2 lines A and B takes the input from line numbers uh, C and also it can the bidirectional bus if you see it goes to the memory. Of course, if you remember what is the memory data register memory data register writes to the memory by this line and also reads from the memory if it reads from the memory. So, this will be the bus. So, it is a 4 port architecture and it is a bidirectional bus and this is something called the memory address register. So, memory address register has nothing, but it just reads the value from bus B and it, it feeds this to the memory. So, memory address register has only a single port because we are assuming a single memory kind of a block here. So, it takes the address register from one from, uh, from bus B it will take the address from where you have to read the instruction or data and this is a single address line because there is a single multiplier block uh, sorry single memory block. So, that this in a nutshell shows what is the basic architecture we are following, but in fact uh, slight changes you can yourself do like for example, memory address register is reading from bus B. You can make it to read from bus A and drop bus B line. So, this is slight some interconnection changes can easily be done over this, but in our examples we will be strictly following this 3 bus architecture. And then we'll, on this one we will try to see basically what are the signals, what are the number of stakes etcetera required to execute the instruction. So, for the time being look at this slide for 1 minute and then draw in your mind that this is going to be the basic architecture and how I am going to actually execute the instruction on this 3 bus architecture. So, again just read through the slides. So, what are the difference uh, in between a single bus architecture and a multiple bus architecture? Let us look at the program counter. You can read the text over here. So, I will just tell you what is the difference and then again we can come back. So, this is the program counter. So, what the program counter does? So, the program counter is basically write the value to bus B which can actually feed the value to the instruction register. So, in fact, this program counter is writing something and it is going to the value of instruction register. At the same time, if you have to also increment the value of program counter equal to program counter plus 1. So, very easily same time you can pass this value to B and you can take this constant 
and you can dump the value over here and it can be directly going to the PC. So, single cycle you can do it. You write the value to instruction register, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, this one will go to the memory address register, I am sorry, this line will not be there, sorry. So, this line will not be there. PC will write to the memory address register, same time you dump the value to B at the second operand from part A you take the value of constant and output here will be equal to PC plus constant and same line you can directly feed it to the program counter. If you compare the single bar architecture, this part was not there basically. So, if this part is not there, in one step you can get the value of program counter to the memory address register. This one you can dump it over there, uh, uh, PC will be PC plus 1, but this line is not there. So, you have to wait till this bus is free because that is the only available bus, then only you can route it from here to here. So, that was two steps if there is a single bus architecture, but in this as there is a three bus, so you can very easily do it in a single stage and also if you look at, so there is a two port program counter. Next it is saying that the memory address register. So, memory address register basically if you look at it, it will take some value from bus B and write it to the memory address, to the memory. Of course, single memory is there, so we cannot have much more ports to help us because if there is multiple ports over here. So, in fact, in this and they connect to different bar to the different lines to the address. So, you should have multiple memory blocks, memory 1, memory 2. So, as we are assuming single memory block, they are not going to help you. So, we are having a single port, two port basically MAR, which takes the value from memory uh, from bus B and directs to the address lines of the memory. But in fact, you instead of bus B, you can also take the input from A that you can easily do. So, that what it says, so it is made in bold, it says that this one is going to change if you are assuming a three bus architecture. Memory address register is similar and does not require any change. So, to, uh, to explain it, um, to emphasize on that, I have not made it bold, sorry. Next, memory data register. So, let us look at it. So, this is a MDR, memory data register. So, memory data register basically, I have put multiple ports over here, because if you consider a single bus architecture, it takes some data in and out basically it can take this is the case if you assume that there is a single bus. So, you have to take a bidirectional port and of course, these two buses are not there. So, what happens it takes up it takes input output from the memory bidirectionally and also it connects to a single line. So, that is what is the architecture. So, it is a two port architecture and both the directions are bidirectional, but in multiple port architecture we are not giving a bidirectional bus here, but we are writing to two different lines that is A and B. So, so, the memory data or memory instruction can go to two different places. In fact, it is if it is an instruction generally it directly goes to the instruction register, there is no point in having uh, two lines, but mainly we are handling also data in the same memory component. So, if the memory data register has a data, so it can directly go to two different memory, two different locations or two different registers or it can go to a register, it can also go to an ALU or two different locations basically simultaneously because it feeds bus A and B together and it reads from bus C and basically this is the bidirectional bus. So, for example, if you want to read from the memory, so it will go over here and then it will go to this bus and this bus. If you want to write from the memory if or if you want to write to the memory basically, you will take the data from here and it will go here. That is a system to memory and then if you are telling the other way around that is from memory to system. So, this is your system and then from memory sorry then it will memory it will come from here and it will that is from the memory to system. System means here you are having two buses over here. So, that is a change that if from two ports now it has become four ports and you have to observe that this is a now a unidirectional bus not a bidirectional bus because output is this direction, output is this direction, input is this direction from the MDR. But in a single uh, bus system which you have to generally make it a bidirectional port because these two port lines are because A and B these two lines are not available, that is these two lines are not available actually. So, MDR has uh, now a fourth port block. So, if you look at it memory data register now has two ports. So, it can write to bus A or B or memory via uh, memory memory data lines and basically uh, the difference has been mentioned over you can read the slides. Okay, and instruction register as I told you. So, basically if you look at the figure, so instruction register we have a we have single instruction that is you take the data from the 
uh, the data means it is the instruction from the memory is taken from the memory data register via it will go this. So, if you want to read an instruction it will come from the MDR basically it will come from the MDR and it will go to the instruction register this will be basically the path it will come from memory to MDR from MDR it will directly go over here basically and we are as we are telling that we are not in, uh, implementing multiple instruction case. So, the instruction register is very similar compared to a single bus architecture. Okay. So, in this case uh, again uh, the instruction register is very similar to the uh, single bus architecture. Now, instruction decoder I just need not elaborate here the instruction decoder is also a very very similar stuff because you are considering a single instruction. So, single instruction will be taken in the instruction register it will go to the decoder and signals will be generated. Of course, the internals of the instruction decoder will change because here the outputs of the instruction decoder will be different because of course, the control signals here will not will have to control 3 buses instead in the old case it was just controlling 1 bus. So, in that case the instruction decoder internals will change, but the input output modes or the I O behavior of the instruction decoder will be similar, because the instruction decoder decodes an instruction and generates the corresponding control signals. So, in this case multiple number of control signals will be generated and it will feed to different parts, but basically if you look at it that if you look at this part not much will change, because it is going to take the data from the instruction register and it will generate multiple instructions instruction values or control signal values basically. So, in fact, the, the control signals of course, will be different because there are different buses. So, there will be different input output configurations, but the overall topology will look very similar that it will take some data instruction from the instruction decoder and generate the corresponding corresponding control signals. So, therefore, they say that not not nothing much changes in the instruction decoder. Of course, the register file registers has lot of changes if you look at it again let us go to the figure sorry if you look at the figure the register changes because in the old case uh, there is a single bu bus like say bus c and the registers files have a bidirectional bus it reads and writes from the same bus. But in this case number of ports are increased because the registers are writing to bus a and b simultaneously. So, you can dump the values into different locations simultaneously and it can but and the input comes from a register. So, in fact, the number of ports have increased from 1 to 3 and secondly there is no bidirectional bus requirement here, because in this case it reads from port this port and dumps the value the output port. So, simultaneously you can read from here and the old value can go over there like a shift register kind of a thing you read from this port and write it to this variable. So, this is the slight change in the architecture of register files arithmetic logic unit that is again the arithmetic logic unit is similar it, 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 it comprises of an adder, subtractor, multiplier, comparator or all the logical instructions that can be executed that hardware is present. But what changes is the there is no requirement of any kind of a temporary register you can read in this slide and then we will basically look at why there is no requirement of any this this slide why there is no requirement of any temporary registers let us again look back here. So, if you just see a single bus architecture in single bus architecture what happens this is the only bus available or let us assume that B is the only bus available A and C are not there. So, what will happen? So, first some data if it has to come. So, let us assume that this bus is also not there this bus is not there. So, of course, uh, this one will have to again go back here with some multiplexing arrangement. So, what is going to happen? So, there is only one bus that is B. So, first first operand actually will come over here and say it will be stored in a temporary register, because there is only one bus which can carry the data. So, this is data 1 which is actually stored in a temporary register. Second one it can come over here and multiplexing I am not taking the constant. So, this one will be the data operand 2 will be directly fed over here. So, first step you have to take a temporary variable temporary register over here stored variable number 1, because there is only single bus. Next stage you connect this bus or from data from some uh, register data and you can connect it to the ALU via max done. Then here you are going to have operand 1 plus operand 2 the value will be equal to say 3 I am taking the value 1 and 2. So, value 3 or operand output 3 will be ready it will be waiting over here C that is A plus B C or whatever the output is there, but this bus is not available over here. So, it is waiting over here. So, where it has to wait again output you have to have a temporary register that will be Y we generally call the register Y. So, after this operation has been done the temporary variable or the temporary register is going to store the value of c that is 3 in this case. Then in the third stage basically this uh, this output variable 
two input register tapered register C will be dumped to the single bus and it will go to the corresponding places and place basically. So, it is a multiple stage process, but in a multiple bus architecture it is very very simple. So, one line is connected from the first operand, second line is connected to the second operand second bus and output is going to a third bus. So, there is no requirement of any temporal registers as such compared to a single bus architecture. So, but basic ALU structure remains same that is not much changes over here uh, and input output ports in that term is also similar, but only thing is there is no requirement of any temporary register. So, that is what is the in a three bus configuration the multiple registers temporary registers job is minimized. So, that is why we are explaining this whole unit using a three bus architecture. If you are using a two bus architecture that flavor is slightly gone because generally a l u means a plus b and the output has to go to c. So, three bus architecture actually makes this things very complete from four bus five bus things are more sophisticated and not that simple to exam explain and if you are having a two bus architecture these advantages cannot be illustrated. So, therefore, we are considering a three bus architecture for explanation. Multiplexer and constant need not to say. So, this multiplexer and constant if you look at it. So, this multiplexer and constant. So, these are same, same because the job is just to take an operand or the constant if you want to increase the value of program counter. So, there is no change in that. So, therefore, if you look at it. So, what changes basically configuration changes are program counter, memory data register, registers and your arithmetic logic unit in terms of temporary registers. So, these changes are happening because there are more buses into picture. Now, we are going to take two examples. In one example, we will show that what are the advantages of having three buses and other case we will show that we do not get so much advantage if you are considering a multiple bus architecture. Two extremes that means two different instructions we will take and show. But for most of the cases, we are always going to have an advantage because that is very obvious because if you have multiple buses, things will go parallelly. But for one or two stray examples, we can see where the advantage is not there. In fact, you are having more hardware but still the number of stages are not reducing. So, the first case we are going to take is add R 1 into R 2. So, what is the thing? So, two variables already available in R 1 and R 2 and then one you have to do it. So, first is you have to fetch the instruction. So, how do you fetch the instruction? Basically program counter output value will go to memory address register in that is as simple as or single bus architecture. Then you put the memory in read mode, here you select 0 that means you want to add the constant and increment program counter and add. So, what this step does already I have discussed so many times in some previous units that program counter value is the address where the uh, instruction is there that you put in the memory address register, make the memory to read mode, select is 0 that you have to add the constant and make it to add mode. But if you look at a single bus architecture, we had another signal that is called setting because the output of program counter plus constant has to store in a separate temporary register which we call it z or y and you have to wait till this step is over then only you can write the value to the program counter. But in this case as you have already seen we do not require any kind of a temporary register. So, we do not have anything called z in or y in something like that to hold the value. So, what happens we will go to the figure and see what happens basically. So, the program counter is going to feed to the memory address register. This is the first step which can be done directly which are going through I mean let me just erase it. Basically, we are doing it through bus B. So, for PC out is we are going we are basically doing add R 1 and R 2. So, program counter out is going to mean M A R in that is done. Then we are going to select this equal to 0. So, that the constant goes over here and program counter of course, if you see uh, we are also using it to give it to the value here. So, this is equal to P C. So, if you can see the program counter is connected to bus B and uh, the bus sorry bus A program P C value is going to bus B and uh, we are feeding it to memory address register and also we are feeding it to the second component of the A L U. So, therefore, output of the P C is connected to bus B and memory address register is taking the value from bus B. So, th as I was saying that slightly sometimes you have to think that if you are instead of doing this if you are taking the value from bus A that will not be a very good design because most of the time the program counter value is taken as input to the memory address register. So, therefore, when whichever output bus you are dumping the value of program counter that should be considered as an input to the memory address register. So, even if I can take the input from here, but you are not doing it 
because the PC is writing through must be, but it can be done if you are sorry, it can also be done, but if you have to, you have to take the output for program counter to bus A, you have to discard this line and you have to discard this line. So, any option you can take. So, as I told you, this is a very flexible architecture, you can have your own design. In this case, we are taking this, so the program counter value is going to come to memory address register, same time it is going to B and we are taking select equal to 0, memory is in add mode and here is equal to PC plus constant is already there and you can see and it is already feeding back to the program counter. So, there is no need to store anything. So, program counter out, you will select 0, memory address register in and at the same amount of time, sorry, and same amount of time you can say that the addition is being done. So, just you can update the value of PC through bus C. So, in a single step you are able to do it. So, this is what is the stage. Pick program counter out, memory address register in, read the memory, select 0 because PC plus constant and add it. There is no concept of any temporary register to hold the value of PC equal to PC plus 1. Next stage is simple, you have to make PC in, read the value of output to the PC and wait till the memory responds. And if you look at the single bus architecture, these things were very similar, you have to read the value of PC. WFMC, but also you had a sim single instruction called Z out. Z out will go to the value of PC in, but uh, here PC in will not require any Z out because already the bus C is carrying the value of the new value of the program counter. So, again I will look back the figure and then it will be clear. So, in this case what happens? We are not having any temporary variable out which is going to the PC in. Here directly you just make PC in uh, PC in. So, whatever the value is in C will directly go over here. So, one control instruction is saved in this case and of course, WFMC is same in both the case because you have given a <coughs> you want to read from some memory, you have given the value to the memory address register. So, sometime you have to wait till the value comes from the memory bus and it will be dumped to the memory address register. That is the instruction add R1 and R2 will come to memory data register after a wait of some amount of time. Then next what is going to happen? The memory register data will be out and it will go to the instruction register and this step will be very very similar to the single bus architecture. So, this is your point memory data register out instruction register in it will be also similar for a single bus architecture because we are not handling as I told you we have a single memory and we are not heavily handling any kind of multiple instructions together. Now, let us see we have to now do the real addition. So, if you look at it so let, what is the addition? So, we are assuming that the two registers R1 and R2 already has the value and the instruction that is R1 add R1 R2 is going to the instruction register from instruction register it goes to the instruction decoder decoding has been done and it will have to generate the signals. So, what it has to generate register value R2 register value R1 they have to be dumped to two different buses they have to be added and the value will be out. So, very simple R2 out R1 out B. So, now that means what as I told you here you have to observe that basically here the signals are R2 out A and R2 out B. Unlike in a single bus architecture you had something called R out, R1 out, R2 out, R3 out. Here you have R out A and R out B. Now, why they are different? Because the register R2 can give the value to two different ports, port A and port B, a two different buses. In this case R2 is giving the value at A and R2 is giving the uh, sorry R2 is giving the value at A and R2 at A and R1 at B. That means, there are two words that is A and B the two buses basically R2 is giving at A and R1 is giving at B. So, simultaneously two data are available there and these are basically if you look at the figure they are going to the two different ports of the AMB and you make select equal to 0 that is very obvious because in this case. Uh, you are not taking PC increment, but you are taking the operand 0 and you have a add. So, you have to very nicely have to observe that we do not have to store the output, this is directly to directly go to bus C. So, you did not have to store any temporary variable over here, because we have directly two buses available which can give input to the ALU and also the output that is equal to R1 plus R2 can directly go and feed bus C. So, you also do not require any kind of a temporary registers over here. So, those things are not required. Now, so, this is the same thing we are doing, we are taking two words A and B and dumping the values of R2 and R1 and making the add operation. 
Now, if you look at a single bus architecture, it would be slightly more complicated. So, what we have to do? We have to take R2 out and Y in. So, what was that? We have to take the value of R2 and store in a temporary register that is actually equal to Y. If you remember, this is a temporary register Y. We are now having the value of R2 over here. One step is gone. Next step, you are connecting R1 here directly to the bus. Then here you are going to have the answer that is R1 plus R2. But then again we require to store this in a temporary register and in third stage only you can write back the value using the bus, the single bus. So, first one you store the value, then the second stage you do the add and you write in the temporary variable and finally only after uh, this one finally you have to make, uh, sorry finally uh, basically the content of R2 and content of will be stored in the register Z in and then this Z, this, this temporary register Z the third stage can only dump the value to wherever required. But in this case, if you look at there is nothing called such type of any registers, you dump the value of R2 and R1 in bus A and bus B and just add it, the value will be available in the memory register C. So, again let me just again look back the figure. So, what I am doing? So, maybe uh, consider this as register R1. So, one register R1 will dump the value here that is R1 out A. So, that is maybe saying R1 out A or out B that means in which bus they are going to give the output. So, we can also have R1 out A, R1 out B that means in that case both B A and B will have the value from the regist same register that also can be done. But in this case R1 out A may be the instruction and that will dump the value of here. So, in our example I think it was 2 anything is ok. So, R1 out B so, in this case 2 and then this is going to have the value of register R1, this is going to have the value R2 and if you look at, so uh, this one is going over here, B is going over here, both the operands are here and the output R1 plus R2 is directly available the output. So, now the instruction was add R1, R2. So, very simple, the value is already available at C, just write the next control instruction will be, uh, that is will be register R1 and you have to make in port C or in that is this value will be directly going to register R1 through this port. Thus, after this one more is control signal required will be R1C and basically you are done. So, if you look at it again. So, this was the case. Uh, so, we have selected addition is being done, but in case of single bus more number of stages as we have seen more uh, more number of intermediate registers and finally, you just put R1 in because there is a single R1. So, R1 in that means the value of bus C will go to basically your register R1. But in case of a single bus architecture, you will be Z out plus R in. That means now the intermediate value was stored in Z. So, it has to be dumped to R in. In this case, the value is available in already bus C and it can be given. So, if you study here, we will save actually one control step for addition and of course, the overall steps will be reduced. At the same time, we do not require any kind of internal CPU registers explicitly some temporary registers are avoided and so the less number of control signals are generated. So, this instruction shows a very explicit advantage of using a multiple bus architecture. For most of the designs you will for most of the instructions you will find out there are advantages. You can easily try out on your own, but what I am going to show you now is one case where the advantages are not there that is same number of instruction time or timelines will be required. Of course, you will save in the number of intermediate registers that of course, will be there, but I will show you where the timeline is similar. So, what is the instruction? The instruction says that load some value from memory memory location m to r 1. So, the first stage is very similar program counter out memory register in read select 0 and n. And of course, as again I told you there is nothing called uh, z in or something uh, because in this case uh, program counter values are available directly in the bus. So, that is the difference already we have seen this one is avoided already have discussed because as I told you in some previous lecture that instruction fetch concept is similar for all the instructions. So, that will be very similar similarly you have to wait for program count in and wait till the data or the, that the instruction in this case comes to the memory data register. Of course, there will be no z out already discussed and finally, the memory data out B will go to R in. There is a slight difference here. So, generally in the when you are having a C 
single bus architecture, we have memory data out. But here we are having memory data out B. That is, uh, the memory data should be giving the output to memory bus B. So, in this case, as you have multiple buses, so we generally make it explicit. Otherwise, uh, because in our architecture, we could have also avoided it, because our memory data register, if you look at, is just connected to basically a single output. So, the memory data register, we are connected to both A and B. So, in this case, you have to explicitly specify that where you have to go to connect basically, because we have to go to instruction register. And instruction register is basically connected to B. So, in this case, we are saying MDR out B. So, as I told you, we can, it is up to you. You can also have slight changes also. You can also have something like then it will be slightly different. You can take the program counter to B, instruction register will come over here, here and then MDR can come. So, slight flexibilities you can do. So, in this architecture as you have seen, so the uh, instruction register is connected to bus B. So, you have to tell MDR out B, but in a single bus architecture MDR out means MDR out. Right. So, we were here. So, basically now MDR out B is going to the instruction register. Now, now it is done. So, the now the instruction that is a load R 1 M that has come to the instruction register. Now, things will basically be different from the previous instruction which I have considered. Now, what? Now, basically your instruction decoder has to tell the address of M and it will have again has to go to the memory address register. That is we are saying that I R out is going to the memory address register in. Now, it will read the data. Here one thing you have to know that basically instruction register actually contains the whole thing, but uh, with slight abuse of notation we are just saying that the instruction decoder is going basically we are saying that I R out the whole I R means the whole thing, but actually want to just locate this in. So, the instruction register decoder basically gives this value to the memory address register this part, but we are not explicitly writing it over here because then you should have written something like uh, instruction decoder out and that also for this part. So, that is that can be very easily implemented, but for ease of notion, not simulator of notation and keep the thing simple, we are just writing instruction register out a memory address register in. In fact, it is basically instruction decoder out which actually considers only the M part of it. Anyway, with this uh, notation simplicity, let us take it through. So, the uh, instruction register out that is the value of M will go to the memory address register in and then you have to read the memory and you have to wait for some amount of time. In case of uh, basically a single bus architecture this would remain the same instruction register out memory in and read. Basically as I again emphasize here because we are having a single memory system and at the same amount and at the same time basically we are also not having multiple memories and uh, single instruction execution at a time. So, when you are taking a data from the memory or instruction from the memory, this type of instructions the control signals will be similar both for three bus as well as a single bus architecture. Right. So, in this case the uh, value will be read from the instruction register to the memory address stream. So, now the memory address register will have the value of m. Now, we have to wait for some amount of time till the memory is ready, then the value will come to memory data register. In fact, that will be also similar for the single bus architecture. Now, something interesting is going to happen. So, now let me again go to the architecture and take it from there. Here we have to pay attention. Now, what? Now, your MDR is having the value of M. Sorry, let us assume that the memory location M has the value of 32. Let us assume this. So, now the val MDR has the value of 32. Now, we have to write it to basically register R1. So, this step is more simpler in a single bus architecture. Let us assume that we have a single bus architecture here and we have only C. Let us assume that only C is available and 32 is available over here. So, these two buses are not there. So, in this case what would happen as I already told you in this case it should be a two bus bidirectional bus because anyway these things are not available with us. It is only a single bus and of course everything will be a bidirectional port and of course you can take this, but anyway at this point of time we do not require the ALU. So, I am not drawing it because the two inputs will again come from bus C only. Now, this 32 has to go to some register file R 1. In this case it will be very simple, it will be M D R out and it will go to R 1 in. So, this value will go here. In a simple single bus architecture as simple as that, but in three bus architecture in this state it is a more complicated way of solving the problem. As you can see the MDR is going to dump the value to bus A and C. By that way any register is going to dump the value of 
where value in A and B and they are reading it through another bus called C. That means, the MDR either through this bus or this bus has somehow to route it from here to here and sorry route it from here to the register file. That is not going to be a very easy task because we do not in this configuration we do not have any connection from bus A, B and C. So, how you do it? So, here we do it in a roundabout way. So, what we do? This 32 sorry this 32 let us assume that I dump it over here that I can do and then or, or to make it uh, right and then what I do? I take it from here and I can connect it here. that is simple that I dump the value of MDR at 32 that will be actually MDR out and you are going MDR out A. So, it will be MDR out A. So, that means the value of MDR is now at bus A. Now, you make select equal to 1. So, that it goes to one port of the ALU. Other thing what you are going to do? We will put all zeros over here. There will be a special register actually there is a register here in the bank which is called reset register that nothing and but it has all zeros. That one you are going to take as out B. So, that one will the 0 register value will be out over B and it will actually connect over here. So, now you are going to have 32 plus 0 which value is C over here. Now, that C basically is nothing but 32 and this one then you can feed it here at R 1 T. So, it is a roundabout process to get the value from any register to any register. So, dumping value from one register to another register in this three bus architecture in topology we are considering is a slightly roundabout way. Of course, you can change and make many changes in the architecture that you can have some multiplexing values over here. So, A can be counted to be all these things you can do, but for this architecture given in place it has to go in a roundabout way. You have to take the value of one register dump it in one port of the ALU, other port you have to set all zeros, output will be given by the ALU to bus C and bus C will go to the some corresponding register. So, it is a longer way. Let us see this one and then we can see that in this case we will have a higher number of stages. So, you were here. So, memory data register that is your m the value of m is 32 over here that is available over here. Now, what they are doing this that is going through bus b reset a through output a in this one reset a means all zeros. So, now the bus b is having the value 32 bus a and we are set setting select equal to 1 that means, we are bypassing the constant. So, it is all zeros they are coming to the a u and output is basically add. So, output is nothing but 32 plus 0 that is equal to 32 and you are going to dump it to register r 1. So, these are the signals which you have to do it you can do it in one step that is not a problem, but more number of signals will be required. Had it been a single bus architecture you could have just written m d r out equal to r e. So, in fact, same in single step only you can be able to do it there is not a problem. So, number of steps are not saved in this instruction. So, if some instruction involve transfer from one register to another plus in this case you do not save any kind of a step, but or also you do not lose to single bus architecture, but only thing is that you require slightly more number of control signals. So, this is one peculiar instruction which we have shown we in which case basically you do not save on the steps, but whenever we have taken this in this case you do not save any steps, but whenever you have taken this one we can say that we have saved some steps because we do not and we do not require any kind of a temporary registers. So, and believe you try you can yourself try with different type of instructions on this bus architecture and you are definitely going to find out that in most and most of the cases the three bus architecture is going to give you much less time cycles that is obvious because more parallel buses and of course, you do not require any kind of temporary registers. So, there are more advantages whenever you are going to a higher bus architecture, but one stray example also I have shown you where you lose in the num you do not lose exactly in the number of time steps, but you also do not gain in the number of time steps, but in fact more complexity is there in the terms of number of control signals and bus management. So, I have given you two different stray examples, but you yourself can take different type of instructions and try to see how it gets executed in a three bus architecture. As again I told you we will not go into too much depth in a multiple bus architecture because it is very intuitive because if you know how to design a single bus architecture place components and how to execute instructions you yourself can modify that and go for a multiple bus architecture. So, you and then obviously, you can extend these concepts and you can also go for micro program development uh, hard uh, micro program control architecture then you can also go micro instructions and all these concepts which you have learned for single bus architecture can be directly applied to the multiple bus architecture you can easily extend these concepts. 
and in fact we are not going to cover more details than that but we have just given you the idea how things can be extended to a multiple bus architecture in terms of a three bus architecture you can yourself take different configurations and do it so towards the end uh, we always go for some kind of questions. So, we see that first question is draw a CPU diagram with 3 bus organization. You can also go for 2 bus organization, 4 bus organization in that design explain the need of each component and compare with the bus having a single bus architecture and compare among yourselves. So, of course, it will satisfy these two objectives describe about the different internal components and also compare the performance in different multiple bus architectures. Then second question one is consider a CPU with three bus and an instruction which is saying R1, R2, R3 add. That means in this case R1 is equal to R2 plus R3. Again try to uh, see how this instruction is executed and compare it to the single bus architecture whether you save in some number of steps or whether similar control number of control steps are required. What is the number of control signals required? You can make a study among this. You can take different instruction, different bus architectures and see how it compares among themselves. So, once you are I think by after doing this lecture you will be able to solve these questions and you will be able to which will actually meet these two objectives which we have targeted in this unit. So, with this we come to the end of this module on control unit which covered basically how an instruction is exactly implemented or how it exactly executes in uh, terms of hardware control signals. And we have gone through a large spectrum of different instruction types, different addressing modes, uh, hardware mode of control, microprogram mode of control, different type of bus architectures and we have dealt in details with the internals of a control unit and how specifically instructions get executed in a very micro observation in this module. So, with this we come to the end of this module again and towards the next module will be on memory components and I O design which will be taken over by Professor Arnab Sarkar in, few, in the next series of lectures. Thank you.